Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 511. What is the optimal blood level for testosterone pellets? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the things that amazed me when I first began to work with Dr. Moffin in her office at BioBalance Health was the discovery to me that women, premenopausal women, had more testosterone in their systems than they did estradiol. I never understood that testosterone was a female hormone. So I have learned that I was wrong. And actually, Kathy and I wrote a book called The Secret Female Hormone, which, because it was a secret to me, it was a secret to a lot of men, and apparently it was a secret to a lot of doctors. Mm -hmm. And so we have been fighting an uphill battle, Dr. Maupin's office has, over the last 18 years, to establish a position in the medical community that says, we have the research that supports us, we have the evidence that supports us, we have the experience with patients who are satisfied that supports us, you need to pay attention to what we're doing. And, and we're looking at trying to establish the correct amount of testosterone in women as they age so that they can avoid altogether or minimize the damaging uh, process of aging that leads to so many of the illnesses of aging and the crippling effects of it. And so that's what we want to talk about today because it's still somewhat controversial. Well, how much do you put in? And, and medicine looks at uh, how, what's the minimum amount of intervention that you can do to help somebody be healthy or safe. It doesn't look at what's the optimal, what's the best. It's like the, mm-hmm. the norms are based on averages from labs like Quest and LabCorp and say, well, this is what you find in this population of people. This is the norm. So you have to get them there. And Dr. Moffin says, no, that's not what my experience shows. And it's not the way that I approach medicine. I don't shoot for a mathematical target. I shoot for health, quality of life, symptom reduction. So let's talk about the differences in those two perspectives and how you approach it. For, for instance, in something that we, you probably know more about, which is thyroid, doctors look for a number. They don't look, they don't ask you, um, is your, has your hair started, stopped falling out? Has you, have you stopped being swollen? Have you gotten more energy? They don't ask you all the symptoms that go along with low thyroid. Have all those symptoms been relieved by the dose I give you? And they don't. Th- we weren't taught to do that. We were taught to say, "Well, that number looks good. Stay on this drug and see ya." Basically, that's how our training was, sadly. But but it's so much more complicated than that in both testosterone and thyroid. It, it's because everybody is different and has a different need. And and our amazing bodies before we have any kind of aging does all this for us, and we take it for granted. And it doesn't. It's starts halting, stopping, stuttering to a stop as we get older. So as we feel these symptoms of low testosterone, which are, there are sexual dysfunction, women just don't have a sex drive. Um, We feel fatigued for no reason. Even our thyroid is actually normal, and we have fatigue along with sexual dysfunction. We also lose our muscle mass, our exercises exhausting instead of uh, uplifting. We notice that we've got belly fat where we used to have a waistline. Um, We also have thinner skin and everything starts dropping. Uh, Testosterone really even helps helps our uh, mood. It helps our anxiety. It treats anxiety. It treats depression. It helps us not be irritable. Believe it or not, they've given testosterone a bad rap saying, oh, this is this is the hormone that makes you angry. It isn't. Well, angry men. Right. The testosteroneized men, you know, let's go to the bar and beat people up. Right, but we have 15 times more testosterone than estrogen. Why are we not in that, that yeah. oh, women are more placid? Well, kind of, but we don't usually go out and start beating up on each other. That's true. But it's not our testosterone that does that. That's, it's just our, our brain chemistry that does that. 
testosterone has some kind of effect on it, but it doesn't make that happen. So in fact, we see that when men get more testosterone, they're happier and they're not as angry. They're not as yeah. frustrated. Yeah. So, um, so we have this list of, of symptoms. We give our patients a list of symptoms for mm -hmm. low testosterone and low thyroid. And because we know that all these things have to be fixed at the same time for you to feel optimally healthy and be healthy. So when we are talking to a patient, we start out by saying, this is your blood level. I'd like to get it above blank. Uh, just in general, after the pellets at, at three months. And if we do that, then we will ask you your symptoms. And if all your symptoms are gone, then that's your perfect number. If your symptoms aren't gone, then we're going to start increasing slowly above that to get rid of all your symptoms. So in both of our books, we have checklists for people that think they might be mm -hmm. candidates for hormone replacement mm -hmm. therapy, especially testosterone mm -hmm. replacement. He said, if you have these symptoms, and, and it, there's a list here that you've mentioned most of them already, poor cognition, memory loss, insomnia, hot flashes, migraines, irritable bladder, vaginal dryness, pain during sex, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So you go through that checklist and you say, well, I have five, six, seven of these things. So I might be a candidate. Mm -hmm. So you fill out the new patient forms mm -hmm. online, make an appointment, get a prescription for a blood test, mm -hmm. have your blood test drawn and sent to the doctor's office, then you make your appointment and go in. And so you then are looking at me as a potential new mm -hmm. patient to make an assessment. Mm -hmm. Is this the right intervention for me at this point in my life? And you have my blood test, which will tell you the numbers as they mm -hmm. exist before treatment. Mm -hmm. And you have my list of symptoms and a discussion with me about my history and my lifestyle. And your medicines. And my and medicines that I'm on. And your family history. Yeah. And that all comes together uh -huh. for uh, Dr. Sullivan and me and, and our nurse practitioners so that we can put that all together into, into a picture for us to see if you really need testosterone or maybe you need to see your, a woman needs to see a gynecologist about her birth control pill or something else. Maybe mm -hmm. it is not in our area. Maybe it has to do with the dose of a birth control pill. Well, and also it, thyroid. Like that. You, you'll assess that as mm -hmm. a first place to go before you decide if I need testosterone. Right. And so if thyroid is the only thing yeah. and we and you go to your doctor and get your, the problem is most doctors give you the lowest possible level and don't get rid of your symptoms. So we end up doing a lot of thyroid as well. Uh -huh. But but our key, our, our foundation of treatment is replacing our testosterone so right. that when our testosterone is back to normal, then we can see if we really need anything else. But it's not we rare. We repeat the blood work, and we also repeat the symptoms. It, it's unusual but not rare that mm -hmm. somebody will come in and you'll look at them and say, okay, based on our conversation, your history, your numbers, so on, you are not now a candidate for mm -hmm. this. But looking ahead, mm -hmm. I'm thinking three or four years out, you may need mm -hmm. to come back and we'll reevaluate. Re mm -hmm. and, and if you find in our discussion some other concern, mm -hmm. then you make a referral to me to go mm -hmm. to somebody – that, mm -hmm. that can identify and deal with that concern. So I you don't just that, take everybody that comes in and say, no. oh, let's give you some testosterone. No, I don't. I, that, would, that would not be, that wouldn't be um, healthy or it, it wouldn't be good medical care at all. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. I mean, if, if I have a guy come in and they're 35 and they're feeling tired and, and you know, and then I ask them about their lifestyle and their lifestyle is crazy mm -hmm. and their testosterone's fine, then... There's nothing for me to, to really fix. Well, or oddly Except enough. I, have to, I can't fix their lifestyle. They have to fix their lifestyle. Oddly enough, sometimes diet. it's not their testosterone. It's their estrogen. Right. They have too much estrogen. They have too much estrogen, mm -hmm. which really blows them away when you say that to yeah, them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and too much estrogen makes you not feel your testosterone. You're making a lot of testosterone, but it's, it's uh, all bound up. And so then you don't feel your own testosterone. This is much more common in men than women. Uh-huh. Um, Men make testosterone their whole life, but at a certain point or under certain circumstances, their testosterone can drop. The active testosterone is the most important number, which is, uh, for both men and women, the free testosterone, the part that's actually working. You can make a lot of testosterone, but you don't feel it because it's all bound up in, with an estrogen-stimulated um, protein called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. So it can be inactivated, and if it's inactivated, then it's my job to reactivate it if possible. And there's a lot of men under the age of 50 that I give a medication called a, 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 a Rimidex. We call, also call it an Astrozole. There's no, that's a generic name. 
So we give them a Remedex and I have them come back in a couple months and see if all their symptoms are gone. Mm -hmm. If all their symptoms are gone, sometimes they call up and cancel their appointment and say, I'm fine. I'm fine now. I'll just keep taking this this oral medication. Right. And that happens more with young people than older people. Older men need it more often after 50. They're going to need to have it replaced. Not always, but most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I evaluate that before they come in. And with women... Women are so much more attuned to their bodies than men are. Right, absolutely. It's, a, it's an amazing thing where women go, okay, well, when I turned 40, I started getting a little tired. And then I didn't want to have sex anymore. And then I did, you know, and then they'll give me this list that is all on this, this list of symptoms from low testosterone. Right. And then I also look at their lab to make sure it's not something else. It could be diabetes. It could be heart disease. You know, I'm looking to see... Is this the reason? And oftentimes there's another reason or two going on, but I'll still treat the testosterone because it's very low. So some of those reasons are genetic. Some of them are cultural. Some of them are dietary. And lifestyle. I mean, we live in uh, the goiter belt mm -hmm. because we don't get enough mm -hmm. iodine in our plants and, and in our mm -hmm. food. Uh, Obesity and diabetes are epidemic in this part of the mm -hmm. United States. Almost all of the United States. All, Half of the United States has prediabetes or diabetes. Yeah, and so that factors into your decision-making, but it also compounds all of the decisions that you make because mm -hmm. you're fighting multiple battles, multiple wars uh, on the same front. It's my body. How can I get my body to stay healthy mm -hmm. and not break down as I age uh, right. any more than it has to? And most doctors who are primary care, I can send their patients back to them and say, you know, I'm fixing this part. Mm -hmm. Could you manage their diabetes? Or, you know, right. maybe the patient hasn't been in in two years and they haven't don't even know they have diabetes. So for things that are managed well by primary care, I'll send patients back for that kind of management. Or I'll give them a few drugs, tell them how to eat, tell them how to exercise, and tell them they'll have diabetes if they don't do this. They often do it on their own. Okay. And then they don't have to stay on that medicine. Uh -huh. However, um, when somebody comes in and has low thyroid, there's not many people in this area that manage low thyroid well. They give patients so little that they don't get better. They just give them enough to stay alive. And that is, thyroid works on every cell in your body and you need thyroid. And especially women need thyroid. There's a lot more thy low thyroid in women than men. So as we were prepping for this conversation... You were trying to explain to me why the recommended proper amount of thyroid has been dropping over the last 10 or 15 years. Blood when, levels. When you look at the blood levels from the major lab companies and mm -hmm. what they identify as this should be the normal. Man this age should have this, this would be normal amount of thyroid for him. And your contention is that's almost never enough because right. of the way they calculate those numbers. Could you walk through that again for me? It's, it's not like just the dose, it has to do with what doctors consider normal okay. or healthy for thyroid. Let's just pick thyroid. There's other hormones that, that the, nor the normals or the reference range is, is not healthy. So what's happened is they, the normals, the normal number for somebody to have a T3 and a T4 uh, that those are the two thyroid hormones. Those numbers have been dropping. So, so they say instead of saying three T three, three to four point five, they say oh two point three to four point four or four point two. So they're dropping this normal, so that almost everybody's normal, no matter how sick they are, no matter how many symptoms they have. And then most doctors go, well, you're in the normal range. See ya. Yeah. So how did they get this normal range? I went to Quest. In um, 2005, and uh, I've asked them ever since, how do you get your normals? But my daughter found out how they get their normals somehow, um, and she was trained with this in, in her residency and family practice. They take the area that you live in, they take everybody that they get a thyroid test on, and then they batch that together, and they decide that's that's the normal. They do a bell curve, and if you're out here or out here, you're abnormal. Excuse me. So if you're out here... More than one standard deviation. Two. two 2.5 standard deviations from the mean. Out here, you're abnormal. So what's happened is everybody's been getting more and more thyroid problems, especially in the Midwest, mm -hmm. because there's no iodine in our food except for salt, and we don't even eat iodized salt. We eat sea salt. 
we don't have kelp in our diet, we don't have a lot of seafood in our diet, so we're not getting iodine, so our thyroids die. So we're in the goiter belt, and that's one of the reasons. So our normal is way lower than, than it should be for healthy people. So they're taking a bunch of unhealthy people, people who live in this area, and they're making a normal out of it. Well, that's not normal and healthy. That's just all the sick people they tested. And the other problem is, if you're testing somebody who is sick, who's in the hospital, who's going to the hospital, who has severe diabetes, and you test their thyroid, their thyroid drops when they get sick. If you test somebody with COVID, their thyroid's going to be low because that's what your body does. It kind of shuts down the metabolism in your body and quiets it down when you get sick so that you can survive whatever infection it is. Okay. So, so we're using abnormal numbers to tell people that their testosterone's normal or their, or their thyroid is normal. So as you're explaining this, I'm wondering, are, are you talking about in the Midwest, which is the example you're using, an age cohort? Say I'm in my 70s. Well, is my testosterone normal compared to 70-year-olds, or is it just compared to the average person in the Midwest when you look at those lab results? They, in general, I notice a difference between men that are 50 and men that are 70, that they give you guys a much lower level okay. than they would give to um, young men. But I hate to tell you this, testosterone levels have been dropping in men of all ages right. over the last two decades. We Which don't is also know affecting why. fertility. And it's decreasing fertility in, in the U.S. So there's something in the water, there's something, there's something that is decreasing our testosterone levels. So, so they're... Doctors are judging your testosterone level against a low, sick, not healthy level, mm -hmm. and they're saying you're fine. So, so that's the because problem. Because I'm in that pile of that that's, low, sick, not healthy right, level. Yeah. yeah. I'm, but that's, I'm just normal. Yeah. So that's, that's, you have symptoms of low thyroid, you should be treated for it. You have symptoms of low testosterone, you should be treated for it. So your approach is to not focus on those numbers mm -hmm. and hit those numbers with the, with the, uh, insertions of the pellets and buildup in the blood system. Mm -hmm. Your approach is to continue to monitor the numbers, but also the symptoms. And so mm -hmm. you want to know, do I have, when somebody new comes in, mm -hmm. you take a picture and you have a conversation, you make notes about all their symptoms. Mm -hmm. They come back four months for men, three months for women, mm -hmm. uh, six months for women, whatever, whatever the range is. And at least once a year, you get another blood panel. Right. And, and then you look at all that data and you say, how are you feeling? And, mm -hmm. and very often they'll say, um, I'm fine. And you say, mm -hmm. well, how about your headaches? Well, I don't have any headaches. Well, mm -hmm. but you had headaches when you come in. Oh, I don't remember that. But you made yeah, notes but of those I things. make them fill out a form so that yeah. I know that they filled it out and I can have to show it to them. Right. They've forgotten they've had that. Yeah, exactly, because it went away. Yeah, but so they remember their sex drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they well. remember. They always go, oh, yeah, my husband's so happy or my partner's so happy. Yeah. You know, so they remember that part, but not everything else that has to do with testosterone and and, and thyroid, they remember, because if your thyroid's not right, you're exhausted, you're swollen, you're fat, you're, 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 you're sleeping all the time. You, I mean, it is your heart rate drops, your blood pressure drops, your metabolism in your cells drops, so you're not burning calories. I mean, it's a terrible thing to have a low thyroid. It, it feels like you just need to sleep all the time. And the people that I get who have been replaced, they've been replaced with the smallest amount amount and their nor normals are not even my normal. What I consider normal is about 10 years ago when we had a healthier population. I use those normals. So you belong to two different international organizations of physicians who specialize in sort of the very, I think, bad name for it, but it's the one they use, anti-aging mm -hmm. medicine. And all of those doctors come, and they are focused on learning these things and spreading the word. Mm -hmm. Then there are lots and lots of other physicians that don't necessarily follow that or read mm -hmm. those journals. You have to read multiple specialty journals, mm -hmm. whether it's gynecology or endocrinology mm -hmm. or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then they will sometimes challenge your treatment protocol or mm -hmm. challenge your numbers that they see mm -hmm. when if, if uh, I have my blood test sent to my doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, She'll look at that, and she doesn't work in your office, mm -hmm. and she doesn't do what you do. Mm -hmm. And she may say, oh, my gosh, these numbers are too high. Now, my particular right. doctor is also a patient of right. yours, so she does understand. <laughs> she does understand that. She yeah. does, uh, for which I'm mm -hmm. grateful. Mm -hmm. But you get into these uh, contretemps all the time yeah. with other physicians mm -hmm. or with patients who, who want to fight you off against one another. Well, my doctor said this, mm -hmm. and you said this, yeah. and who's right? So how do you deal so, with that? <laughs> 
but I know ne- it's never pleasant. Yeah. When when other doctor, you know, I'm not going to call up a doctor and say, "Hey, don't you know, badmouth me to your patient," because that just does no good at all. But I have to tell, I have to really convince my patient that are they healthier? That's my question. Do you feel better than when you walked in here? Mm-hmm. Do you have any new side effects? No. Do you have? Do you feel better? Yes, I feel great. I mean, I'm better weight. I'm I'm. My brain works better. I'm now working again. A lot of people have stopped working before they come to me because right. they're so tired or they're so, I mean, they can't move. They hurt all the time, and, and we fix that as well, so with testosterone. So they. So when we're talking to people, I just I say, the proof is in the pudding. What do you, how do you feel? And they say, I feel great. And I said, then you need a new gyneco- gynecologist or PCP or, or family doctor because they don't get it and they don't want you to feel better. You should just say, I feel better. I'm not talking about that. Well, or sometimes, I'm here for my lungs or whatever. Sometimes you are asked by the patient to get involved in trying to explain to the other physician. And you will regularly send them the articles. research articles that you have that yeah, support your position. Yeah, like the one on this one, yeah. the research article on this. Because right. frequently doctors will go, your levels are, they're not testing the free testosterone. They're testing in women the total. I'll say, your testosterone is, the, is as high as a guy's. Well, an old guy, maybe, but our percentage, it isn't equi- equivalent. Our percentage of testosterone is so much smaller for the same amount of total, our free, the active part is so little that it isn't the same feeling as a guy that had that the total number of 300 and a woman who had 300. We have just a teeny tiny little bit of that that's working, and we don't have as many receptor sites. So we don't have as many areas on our body that collect testosterone and activate our cells. Men have a ton more, so they feel it more. So their body responds to it. So it is not at all the same. It's a complete difference. So we have to go by what does, how do you feel? What is this making you feel normal? And and that's just not a narrowly focused concern in medicine. Medicine globally struggles with exactly that issue. Do we get our best results? Is our best patient care provided by finding the right numbers from the labs, from the research mm-hmm. data? Or... Do we get our best patient care from talking to the patients, understanding their lifestyle, understanding their issues, and see what their quality of life is and how we can improve it? And, and when I was in medical school, they said 90% of your diagnosis is not in the lab, is not in a test, is not in anything. It's in talking to your patient. And what's been lost over the last 35 or 40 years is that they no longer tell people that who are training to be doctors, and they don't give them enough time. They basically say... HMO say, yeah, you got to do this many people in a day. Or, so, so, so that's the problem. So, so we decided to have this conversation because we wanted to give you the information to make you aware of the conflict within medicine about symptom alleviation mm-hmm. versus hitting a magic number and how those magic numbers are sometimes determined. So if you are confused, you can find the information on our website and in our books, but you can also discuss it with your own physician. Say, so, this confuses me. Can you tell me what your approach is, how we're trying to make that me get better? That may not be productive. It may not be, but uh, good luck. Thank you for <laughs> Thank listening. You. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.